Right now, Pittsburgh's best sports show is about to begin. Call us or tweet us. We've got things to talk about on the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call. I'm your host, Josh Taylor. Good to talk to you again on a Saturday night. A Saturday night with a lot of baseball to talk about. Pirates and Rockies on the field right now at, in Denver at Coors Field. At last glance, Pirates were trailing 6-1 to one in the fifth inning, but we'll get you an update on that as soon as we can. In the meantime, got a lot to talk about as far as the bullpen and how they've performed well in these last couple of bullpen games that they've started. We can talk about that. Jarrett Jones, pretty not so common night on the mound for him starting against the Rockies this evening. He got knocked out of the game, and, or I should say he got knocked around in this game, so not a good start for him. But also Brian Reynolds, could he be on his hottest run of the season? Are things looking up for him offensively? Plus, a big move in the NFL, and what could that mean for the Steelers as far as the wide receiver market, maybe either in a trade or trying to retain one of their own? We'll talk about all those things and more with my guest who joins me right now. It's Jason Mackey from the Post-Gazette. Jason, let's start with the Pirates here because um, some injury news also that we heard today. Henry Davis goes on the seven-day concussion IL, and it just seems like, Jason, another chapter of just speed bumps in the road, if you will, for Henry Davis trying to get that fast track into the lineup and get that career rolling and another bump he runs into this weekend. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a rough one, Josh. Uh, since he came up here, he had largely struggled up until that home run, and you could see Henry kind of searching for it again. We, we saw at the beginning of the season how much he didn't have it. It really didn't translate the work he did during spring training into the regular season. Gets a home run, should th theoretically have some confidence, and now he's on the shelf. And honestly, you know, before we went on the air, I saw Yasmani Grandal lob a throw back to the pitcher and allow the Rockies to steal home. And, and it just made me want to throw up my arms in frustration. You're without your 1-1 pick behind the plate in 2021 with Henry Davis. Joey Bart, who has actually been halfway decent for them, is hurt. Um, Yasmani Grandal has not hit a lick. He's been okay defensively, and then you do stuff like that. They're down to Jason DeLay. I mean, this is an important position. It's an important position defensively. They thought they were going to get offense from Henry Davis. That hasn't arrived. I mean, I know we're going to talk bigger picture about the Pirates, but it's, it's frustrating right now. I'm sure if you're a Pirates fan, you want to see more out of that position. Yeah, and to add it all up, perhaps your best defensive guy is Indy Rodriguez, and he's out with an injury for the entire year. So you, you pile all that up. It just seems like uh, some of it obviously being bad luck and some of it just being poor performance at the catcher position. But you, we've named five guys now that we've either seen or expected to see, whether it was this season or last season, and that just tells you just how crazy things have gotten at that position. On the, the pitching side of things, we talked about Jarrett Jones. He got the start uh, earlier this evening. You can make the case that maybe he got pinched a little bit in the early going, maybe got squeezed a little bit, but the Rockies also got some, some pretty clean base hits on him. Um, it's easy to make the case that they're in Denver and the ball travels there, but all the same, the result's not there tonight for Jared Jones, Jason. Yeah, I mean, shouldn't it travel for both teams? It, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it, it did last night for them. Right. At least. Um, you'd like to see the Pirates mount more offense, and they're kind of up against it right now. I, I would argue that they should have in some form or fashion taken two of three in St. Louis, and now you're in a Colorado series. Things are not looking good right now. Uh, let's say they lose this one. I mean, you have to win on Sunday. You have to come out of this road trip taking two of three from at least one of those series. I know that it rubs some people the wrong way, and rightfully so, about Derek Shelton and the lineup he sent out there in that third game against St. Louis, resting a bunch of guys. Um, I don't love it. I'm not sitting here defending it, but it, what's done is done, and at this point, you know, it, it's going to be tough to win tonight, which just puts a further um, onus or, or importance on Sunday's game. You can't come back in the situation that they're in, two teams that they should be able to theoretically beat and lose two series. So, uh, yeah, not looking good right now, Josh. Yeah, tomorrow becomes a pretty pivotal day because, A, we, I don't think we've gotten 100% clarity in who's going to start that game tomorrow. And also, O'Neal Cruz, they tried to see what he could do today. They said he wasn't feeling up to it. So, you wonder if he's available to come back and be able to play tomorrow. So, yeah, tomorrow really becomes a pivotal point. But who do you expect to see on the mound tomorrow, Jason? Well, I, Martin Perez at the beginning of this thing, and I think there's still a possibility that Martin Perez will wind up starting for them. I don't think he's far off. I think that was the hope, the expectation. A guy named Dalton Jeffries is lined up to start for AAA Indianapolis. I think he might be the backup plan. And I honestly, I wish I could tell you a little bit more about Dalton Jeffries. I, I can't. <laughs> um, you know, he's one of their classic dumpster dive waiver claim dudes. 
uh, that they're going to try to throw in there and help, which uh, to me is just a, a frustrating thing. I, you know, we can sit here and talk about the bullpen games, and they've honestly done a pretty good job. Yep. Luis Ortiz has been effective in that role. I don't hate Carmen Majinski as an opener. I just don't think it's something they should be leaning on as regularly. And as good as we all might feel about the starting rotation, Mitch Keller, Paul Skeens, Jared Jones, even Jones, despite what has happened tonight, what Bailey Falter has done, I wish this pitching staff was deeper. And mm -hmm. I've, I've heard questions, you know, should they trade pitching for, for hitting or something like that? And I, I'm just clinging to young pitching for situations like this. They're not deep enough. I think that is a fair criticism of them. And, you know, <laughs> It, let's back up again, Josh. A game they absolutely win, yep. need to win. They could theoretically be running out somebody who has not been good since April and has been hurt in Martin Perez or somebody who has not pitched for them ever in Dalton Jeffries. Yeah, it's a point that Susie Cool and I talked about last night because you were talking about the bullpen game, and granted, they've, done, they've pitched two of them, and they've done their job tremendously. Two runs allowed in 18 innings. You can't ask for anything better. At the same time, just imagine what you can get out of Luis Ortiz and Carmen Majinski on a more consistent basis if they're coming out of the bullpen because you have a fifth starter going in there and they're not having to tie up that day. So now you have two fresher arms out of your bullpen, you have a full rotation, and maybe you're getting better performance out of both ends of your pitching staff. So that's the, the residual effect when you see what the bullpen games do. 412-575-2600. Give us a call there or shoot us a tweet over at Josh Taylor HD. We will take a break. When we come back, we'll have our tweet of the night. We're taking your phone calls. And we're going to keep it rolling. Stick around. Welcome back. Time for our GMC Sierra tweet of the night. Comes from Paul Skeen's Muse. Very interesting account. Talking about Luis Ortiz this year. 20 games pitched, 43 innings, 2.51 ERA. 1.16 walks in hits per innings pitches a little bit more than a base runner per inning with a 210 opposing batting average. We talked about what that um, that bullpen is done. We talked about those bullpen games. Ortiz went five innings last night, gave up a run. I think the outing before that, that bullpen game before that, I think he went four and a third scoreless. So definitely doing that job from the bullpen. Want to give a quick update here. It is now six to two Rockies over the Pirates going into the bottom of the sixth, but it does speak to like you mentioned, Jason, the issues with the pitching staff and how they can maybe work themselves around some of the issues that they're facing if they have a healthy rotation to go with a, a more condensed bullpen, maybe having more specific jobs to do. Got more baseball to talk. We'll do that with John and Cranberry. You're on the nightly sports call. Hey, hey Josh, Jason. First of all, happy Father's Day to both of you. Thanks Appreciate for taking you. my call. Happy Thank Father's you. Day. Yes, indeed. Thank you, guys, to both of you. Yes. So I, I know the Pirates is the big topic uh, right now, but I, I did want to talk about baseball, but something different. Um, I wanted to discuss the situation with Pat Hoberg, the major league umpire who was investigated for uh, gambling. And he was disciplined um, by the league, but he has appealed it. And so none of the real details have come out. But my, my question to both of you, and Jason, I know covering the Pirates, you might be dialed in a little bit to MLB. What, what exactly is the punishment? I know that if you bet on games that you're involved in, you're banned. But if you bet on baseball, are you still banned? And are you allowed to bet on other sports? And why I'm bringing this up um, is that, you know, gambling now with all the sites, DraftKings, FanDuel, it's, it's, it's embedded in all sports. And now I'm worried, you know, the integrity of the game is almost that question. So I wanted to get both of your guys' take on the situation with, with Oberg and what do you guys think? How do you think it'll end? Jason, I'll let you go first as far as the MLB side and the rules as far as the rules is concerned. Yeah. Um, if you bet, let me just start from the beginning, John. I mean, if you bet on games that you're playing and you're banned for life, if you bet on other games that you're not involved in, I, I'm not quite sure what that would look like from an umpiring perspective. Um, you're probably talking at a minimum of a year, and I would, I would imagine that given his – place in the game, um, given what the bets are, that you could possibly be looking at a lifetime ban. Um, I don't know the evidence. I don't know if we know the evidence. Um, I found the details, what little we know of the Hoberg situation, kind of weird. Mm. Um, but you are allowed to bet on other sports, as long as it's legal where you are. Um, so I wouldn't worry about that. But I mean, if Pat Hoberg is betting on baseball in any way, I think Major League Baseball sort of has to draw a line 
between Pat Hoberg being a major league umpire and having knowledge that other people don't. So I, I again, I, I really, I have a tough time predicting what the outcome will be, but I, it's not going to be light if he is found to have indeed betted on, bet on baseball games. It's a really, really complex situation, Jason. I think it's even fair to call it weird. I mean, considering, oh, the, fact, so. considering the fact that this is a guy who was considered to have called a you know, perfectly rated game as an umpire in a World Series recently. So this is it's not like this is just some guy who's been maybe throwing games left and right. He actually has a pretty good reputation for his ability to call games. But it, it speaks to a larger point, and I think the caller references too, is that you know we've seen a little bit too much of a comfort zone when it comes to how the leagues themselves are being involved in sports betting because you know you'd like to think there would be more clearly established lines but they're clearly blurred Jason and I think we're seeing more of those problems not just in baseball and other sports as well it becomes an issue and I, I see the sign and that's, that's kind it, of the, the bottom line really it's it and I hate it I hate it I'm, I'm not a betting man I have nothing against those who do it I'm not levying any sort of criticism but these leagues are hypocrites every single one of them and I'm not saying that they should legalize betting you should be able to bet on things you're playing in but I mean even the argument of Pete Rose being not yeah. in the Hall of Fame there you go like every time I see a commercial for DraftKings I'm like are you serious Pete Rose is not in the Hall of Fame but we're gonna here here bet on DraftKings bet on this game betting 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 it's it's insanity and I mean I understand why they're doing it Major League Baseball is not alone every professional sport is doing it you have official betting partners of insert league here um, I just the hypocrisy and it drives me crazy, Josh. It, I, I put that file in a folder and I put that in the same drawer with the steroid era and keeping those guys out when they were breaking home runs and no one was saying anything. It, it's it, it's in the same drawer of the same file cabinet. I, I find it very interesting. Well, yeah, that and that's a whole nother discussion topic for me as a baseball writer. So I do not have a Hall of Fame vote. I will have a home, Hall of Fame vote one day. You don't need sports writers determining morality of anything. Like, I'm very much a Bond should be in. I'm very much a, 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 a guys in the steroid era should be in type of voter. I mean, not everybody, of course, but I would never hold that against Barry Bonds. To me, he's a Hall of Fame player before any of that happened. I just think it's absolutely crazy when it was as prevalent as it was. You're not breaking any rule at the time and just – we should not be legislating morality in my point in my point of view people on the outside should be they they can determine the context there 100 percent agreed completely agreed on all counts everything you just laid out it, it's i find it interesting that they pick which times they want to keep a blind eye and which times they want yep. to pay close attention and i don't think it's consistent at all and it just looks really really bad for the game as a whole we got to take another break we'll talk a little bit more when we come back before we wrap up stick around <laughs> 